Having a church family. Every Christian needs a church family. Today we have the convenience of automobiles that allow us to travel almost any distance necessary in order to have a home church. But in Bible days there was very limited freedom in travel. Their home church was often the closest church. Believers had home churches in every city with elders as leaders and gatherings took place in the homes of the believers. In Titus 1.5, Paul commanded Titus to ordain elders in every city. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. The book of Romans and Colossians records that Aquila and Priscilla had a church in their house and so did Nymphus. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute the brethren which are in Laodicea and Nymphus, and the church which is in his house. The reasons for a church family are numerous. First, you need to feel God's love from others and express God's love to others, according to John 13, 35. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Second, you need to be provoked or receive inspiration from others and then provide inspiration to others according to Hebrews 10, 24, and 25 and 1 Corinthians 14, verse 6. Third, you need exhorted or comforted by other believers according to Hebrews 10, 25. Fourth, you need to be happy or joyful, which Jesus said comes through taking communion and washing the saints' feet in John 13, 14 to 17 and Acts 2, 42 to 46. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Fifth, you need to limit the number of voices you hear, focusing on the faithful, God-sent voice of your pastor and the four other preaching gifts God sends into your church. John 10, 4 and 5. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. John 10, 27 My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Sixth, you need to learn proper judgment in church family situations, how to judge yourself and fellow church family members. Peter says judgment begins at the house of God with those that obey God. 1 Peter 4.17 For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it begin first at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel? Paul states this even more clearly in 1 Corinthians 6 verses 2 through 4. Do ye not know that the saints should judge the world? And if the world should be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. Seventh, you need to learn to forgive and love like Christ within your church family. Ephesians 4, 30-32 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Financially Supporting Your Home Church As a Christian, you should financially support your home church with tithes and offerings. I have a two-part series explaining New Testament Christians should pay tithes to their pastor so he can live of the gospel as he focuses on prayer and preaching. Christians pay offerings to promote the welfare of the physical church building. Paul ordained that the Corinthian Christians should bring their financial support on the first day of the week, which was Sunday, in 1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 and 2. The Final Gathering As you've learned, the local home church gathering represents God's sheep willingly gathering as a flock to be fed, taught, corrected, comforted, and cared for. But God has one final mandatory gathering that all men and women will attend, like sheep and goats gathered unto a shepherd. This is called the great white throne judgment, according to Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 to 15. Christ will judge each person by their works recorded in the heavenly books. 
Names found in the Book of Life will be granted eternal life, and those names missing will be cast in the lake of fire. Matthew 25 verses 31 to 46 is a second text about the great white throne, as Christ likens this event as he himself, the chief shepherd, separating sheep, the saved, from goats, the lost. If you've studied your Bible carefully, though, you will know that the true sheep who heard Christ's voice and followed him during their earthly lives were not being judged in this event, but were seated in judgment upon thrones next to Christ as his bride, just as he promised the overcomers. Revelation 3.21 To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. Paul promised this same reward for faithful, earthly service to the Lord Jesus Christ, saying, Do ye not know that the saints should judge the world? And if the world should be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? Yes, the true Holy Ghost-filled sheep will be sitting down with Christ in his throne at the great white throne. But the multitude group who is granted eternal life are only symbolized as sheep, proven by the fact they are surprised to be given eternal life by Christ. For they say, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. True Holy Ghost filled Christians already have the assurance of their salvation while on earth, and won't be surprised on judgment day. As Paul says, 2 Timothy 4, 6-8, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. In conclusion, I trust the Holy Ghost has illuminated your eyes to see the necessity of a home church. One of my main purposes in having a YouTube ministry is to point you and all of my viewers to Jesus Christ, that you may find God's position for you in your local church. I am not and have never considered myself to be the pastor of YouTube, nor the pastor of other men's sheep. But I am seeking to point sheep to God's truth that they may be led of the Holy Spirit to a local flock or home church. If you do not have a home church, I trust that the Holy Ghost now will lead you to that place. If you have any questions about having a home church, please contact us. God bless you, and may Jesus Christ be the desire of your heart.